Welcome to Get Sleepy, the podcast where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. My name's Tom, and it's my pleasure to be your host. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you're feeling comfy and peaceful, but don't worry if you're not quite there yet. Just relax in bed and listen along to my voice for as long as you'd like. There's no hurry whatsoever. The theme of our story this evening is the sounds of the ocean, and not just the sounds of the shore, like the rhythm of the waves and the squawking of seagulls, but those beneath the surface too. Below the waves, You'll also hear the whistles, clicks, and hums that sea creatures use to communicate. It may be peaceful underwater, but it certainly isn't silent. Tonight's story is a bit like a nature documentary, where there's no plot and you won't be left wondering how it ends, which means you can feel free to drift off at any time. And as something a bit special to accompany this story, you'll hear an expanded soundscape throughout, with some of the sounds described blended subtly into the background. So, let's prepare to listen with a moment of relaxation. As if turning off the light switch for your day, Close your eyes and give yourself permission to rest. Steady your breathing into a slow, repetitive pattern, drawing the air gently in and easing it back out. As you distance your thoughts from the day, you can let your imagination carry you to a quiet beach with soft sand underfoot. Much like your breathing, the ocean waves here wash in and out, never ceasing in their calm, repeated motion. Just listen to the sound for a moment. A sound that, unlike many we hear in our modern lives, has always accompanied human life since it began on this planet. Our ancient ancestors no doubt experienced the profound bliss of the ocean waves landing on the shores all over the world. And it's safe to say, no matter how life evolves and changes, this never-ending rhythm will continue to bring calm and tranquility as we breathe in the fresh sea air and leave all our troubles behind. Follow the rhythm of the waves, breathing in and out and drifting towards a good night's sleep. This sound is one we are all familiar with. But throughout the vast depths of our oceans, there are many other sounds to be discovered. Some are truly extraordinary. And tonight, we'll hear all about them. So, let's begin on the calming shoreline 
as we dive deeper into rest. It's a beautiful, sunny day. The sky is azure, a clear, cloudless blue. This color is mirrored by the ocean beneath. The water seems to glow with its own magical blue light, sparkling when the sun hits. In this moment, the surface of the ocean almost appears to be still. The wind has calmed down, and the waves roll gently towards the sandy shore. The sound they make is soothing, creating a steady, calming rhythm. Each wave washes quietly over the sand then retreats with a soft whooshing sound, in and out. The tide creates a hypnotic rhythm. At first, it seems that the sound is the same each time. The wave comes in and goes out just like the one before. But then the breeze gets a little stronger, just for a moment. The waves become slightly larger and louder. While the rhythm may be regular, if you listen carefully, there are also subtle changes and variations. After all, the ocean is interconnected with everything. The sand, the air, and all the creatures that live in the water. So, while the sound of the ocean waves may seem unchanging and almost monotonous at times, it might be altered at any moment. A slight shift in the wind direction is all it takes to influence the waves, like a conductor guiding an orchestra. The waves grow rougher and louder, then become calm and quiet once more. And then the sound alters yet again in subtle, mysterious ways that can only be perceived by the creatures who live here. High above the waves, a seagull flies in slow circles. This bird knows the sounds and the movements of the ocean well. He watches the waves, choosing the perfect moment to dive down in search of fish. When the water is calm and a fish is visible near the surface, the seagull will swoop down. Gulls have exceptional eyesight and can see up to two miles away. So for this bird, circling high above calm water on a clear day, it should be easy to find something to eat. He's looking for something he can bring back to his newly hatched chicks in a nearby nest on the cliffside. 
they're currently being watched over by the gull's mate. She's not just the mother of his chicks, but also his life partner. Gulls are one of the few creatures in the animal kingdom that mate for life. This male gull is hoping to catch some fish for his family, or perhaps some clams or mussels. These are tougher to eat, but he's developed a clever way to open them. He drops the hard shells onto the rocks from a height until they break. Clams and mussels are particularly tasty, so they're well worth the extra effort. The gull drifts further along the coast, keeping his eyes fixed on the water below. And then he becomes aware of movement and colour just below the surface. He recognizes these pale, silvery shapes and lets out a loud cry of excitement. Right below him is an enormous school of fish. They should provide plenty of food, not just for him and his chicks, but also for the rest of the colony. Moments later, a group of gulls flies over to join him. Drawn by his noisy cries, they soon respond with expressive calls of their own, and the air is filled with echoing squawks. On clear, calm days like these, the sounds of the gulls carry all along the coast, they can be heard for miles around. While seagulls are famously boisterous, they don't make noise just for the sake of it. They are clever, highly social birds. Using a vast range of vocalizations and body language, they communicate with other members of the colony. This communication begins in the egg, before the gull has even hatched. An unborn chick will make a peeping sound to attract its parents' attention and ask for food. The parent gulls then echo this mewing call as a kind of baby talk. The sounds used in courtship are similarly soft, while other situations require loud, trumpeting calls. The exact tone depends on whether the bird is wooing a mate or engaged in a territorial dispute. Humans often try to interpret these sounds translating them into human expressions and emotions. Perhaps a particular cry means, this is my patch, or conveys elation or triumph. But the subtle intricacies of their communication are something that only the birds can know. This group of gulls alternates between excited chattering and long, plaintive calls. Soon, other birds will join them for the feast. But right now, it's the spotter's turn. He caught sight of the fish first, and he's about to seize his moment. The gull waits until the fish are clearly visible 
beneath the waves, then begins his quick descent. He plunges rapidly towards the surface, down, down, down. Seagulls can dive into the water, but they don't stay submerged for long. They're underwater just long enough to grab their prey, and then they soar back up into the air. That's good news for the fish that swim a little deeper below the surface. It's peaceful down here, and the fish swim slowly. Some hardly move at all. They allow themselves to be carried by the gentle movements of the waves, rocking back and forth. Moving further out into the shallows, the majestic coral reef emerges. The sunlight streams through the water, casting shimmering patterns on the coral. Tiny, iridescent gobies dart in and out of the vast golden structure. Larger, brightly colored fish drift serenely past, moving in slow motion. The fish that live on the reef come in all the colors of the rainbow, from vibrant orange to electric blue. As they slowly make their way around the coral, some are silent, while others emit hushed noises. Some fish blow bubbles that make soft popping sounds as they rise upwards. Others ripple through the water with their supple bodies, making delicate swishes with their tails. But these are quiet, meaningless sounds, very different to the constant chatter of the seagulls. At first, it seems as though each fish is floating silently in its own private bubble. None of them appear to be communicating with each other. One fish glides right past another, separated by no more than a fin's breadth. And yet, they both appear oblivious to the other's existence. They're like purposeful rush hour commuters, too focused on their destinations to even glance at the other travelers. But this apparent indifference is only part of the picture. Fish do communicate with each other in myriad ways. Some methods are silent, like electrical impulses or the secretion of pheromones. Light and color can also be used to send messages during courtship, as some fish will flash lights or change to a brighter or darker hue. For group interaction, body language is important. Fish respond to certain gestures when swimming with others. By reacting quickly to each other's movements, fish are able to move in vast, synchronized schools which allow them to travel safely and find food. But the most common way for the majority of sea creatures to communicate is 
through sound, which travels even more rapidly underwater than in the air. A busy coral reef teeming with fish is full of sound as well as color. A bright blue fish circles the reef, emitting a soft purring sound. This male fish is looking for a mate, and he hopes that his call will attract the attention of any female fish in the area. He repeats the series of purring vibrations again and again as he swims over the coral. To make these sounds, he uses his swim bladder. The organ contracts and vibrates, producing a low buzz. Other fish make noises by grinding their teeth or snapping their jaws. Herring can even communicate with each other by releasing high-frequency gas. It may not be the most conventional way to interact, but it seems to allow shoals of herring to find each other and stick together at night. Fish don't hear sounds in quite the same way as humans. They detect vibrations with their inner ears, picking up on mating calls, warnings, or any other kind of message from their fellow fish. For instance, a dominant clownfish will open and close her jaw to make chirping, popping sounds, telling the rest of the group that she's in charge. Some deep sea fish croak in baritone, singing love songs to a potential mate that might be swimming a few kilometers away. The meanings of other sounds are more obscure. They might be the marine equivalents of songs, shouts, or chants. But perhaps their true significance is a secret known only to the fish. Scientists are hoping to find out more about fish communication, as well as the mysterious sounds emitted by other sea creatures. There are even plans to create a virtual catalog, which would help scientists to monitor all the sounds of the ocean, from humming fish to squeaking manatees. The name for this audio collection is the Global Library of Underwater Biological Sounds, or GLUBS for short which sounds like the noise a cartoon fish might make. Perhaps there are some fish that communicate with glubs too, as well as purrs and croaks. There are so many more intriguing sounds out there in the ocean, yet to be heard. Beyond the coral reef, further away from the shore, some other sea creatures are in the middle of a lively conversation. Two bottlenose dolphins make exuberant clicks and whistles as they speed through the bright water. This mother and daughter pair are exploring the ocean together, on the hunt for fish. Just like their prey, dolphins can communicate in a variety of ways. 
tail slaps or loud exhalations through their blowholes are often warning signs, while synchronized movements express solidarity. They can also send messages through clouds of bubbles and impressive aerial displays. And then, of course, there are the sounds. These two dolphins are in constant, noisy communication, expressing themselves through high-pitched whistles. They can recognize each other from a distance by sound alone. Each bottlenose dolphin has a signature whistle. A mother performs this whistle while pregnant, teaching the song to her unborn child. The calf then spends the first year of its life developing her own personal sound, based on the calls of the adult dolphins in her pod. Once the young calf has formed a unique call, she uses this sound to communicate with other dolphins for the rest of her life. It's like her own theme song, which she can use to share information or express herself when socializing with others in the pod. As the pair twirl downwards, the mother dolphin emits her signature whistle. It's like a long, vibrating squeak that echoes through the water. Then her calf responds, not with her own whistle, but with a perfect imitation of her mother. This kind of affectionate mimicry is rare in nature and suggests there's something unique and special about the bonds in dolphin families. The connection between a mother and her calf is particularly close and long-lasting. This calf will stay by her mother's side for at least a few more years, learning how to hunt and stay safe. And even after she becomes independent, she'll stay with the pod and return to swim with her mother every now and then. But for the moment, the two remain inseparable they swim further into the depths, whistling lovingly to each other and spiraling in a graceful dance. Then, when they've gone as deep as they can go, they decide to head back up. It's time to rejoin their friends and family in the pod. As the mother and her calf swim towards the surface, their joyful clicks gradually fade away. The sounds are imperceptible to the creatures who swim at deeper depths. It's quiet down here, but not completely silent. A new sound emerges now, a melodic moan that gradually grows louder and louder. This is the song of a humpback whale. The adult male swims slowly in peaceful solitude. As he travels, he performs haunting vocalizations 
that often last for twenty minutes or more. It's a low, ethereal sound that can be heard hundreds of miles away. The sound is beautiful in itself, but the enigmatic nature of the whale's song makes it even more fascinating. Scientists still don't know exactly why humpback whales sing, or why they create such lengthy, complex structures. The song often consists of multiple sections known as phrases, with varying frequency and volume. These patterns are repeated over and over again, sometimes for several days. In other words, humpback whales sing intricate, self-composed songs on a loop, without any clear, obvious reason. Perhaps their mating calls, or claims to territory, or they might even be making music simply for the pleasure of it, just as humans do. Whatever the reason, the whales keep singing throughout their lives. These extraordinary melodies change and evolve over time. A whale might even share its song with another unrelated whale, who can learn parts of the harmony. This could be considered the marine equivalent of a language exchange, as one whale picks up phrases from another. The humpback whale continues his slow, plaintive song as he moves upwards towards the surface. Even as he swims higher and higher, the water remains dark. Night has fallen, and the silvery moonlight only just reaches the surface. The ocean is peaceful, and the only noise that can be heard distinctly is the whale's song. His harmonies grow louder and louder. And then, at last, he falls silent. His powerful voice box needs a break every now and then. It's time for a rest and a breath of fresh air. The whale slowly rises out of the water, his head surfacing above the waves. He takes a deep breath of the cool night air inhaling through his blowhole. Unlike humans, whales are conscious breathers. Rather than breathing automatically, the whale has to decide to come up for air. So instead of sleeping deep below water, he naps close to the surface, where he can breathe. Sleeping habits vary between different types of whales. Sperm whales sleep in pods, dozing below the surface while their bodies remain vertical. It looks as though they're sleeping while standing upright. This humpback whale 
is starting to feel sleepy after a long swim and an equally long musical performance. As he floats at the surface, he closes an eye and finally allows himself to rest. Tonight, all is quiet on the ocean. The whale has finished his song. The pod of dolphins sleeps near the shallows, while the fish rest on the moonlit coral reef. On the cliff overlooking the coastline, the seagull family huddles together in the nest, fast asleep. The only sound that can be heard now is the soothing rhythm of the waves. The tide is slowly coming in, washing over the shore. The water flows over the sand, then falls back. It comes in and then goes out, as though the sea itself is taking deep breaths. With each wave, the ocean soothes these marvelous creatures deeper into sleep.